Hi guys, my channel hit 100 subscribers so I thought what better way to celebrate than by complaining about the very community I joined. After all, you guys seem to like it a lot when I talk about things I hate. In all seriousness, I do love K-pop YouTube, otherwise I wouldn't be making videos. But nothing is perfect, and I've been collecting these complaints for months so I really need some place to let it all out. None of these opinions are targeting any specific YouTuber, video, or idol unless you're stupid in which case you probably think they are. I myself am guilty of a lot of them. I'm nothing if not honest and didn't hold back with these. So without further ado let's get started. 1. Thinly Veiled Hate You've probably seen unpopular opinions videos but an adjacent trend is offensive unpopular opinions videos. While most of the opinions in these videos are actually quite tame and not offensive at all, occasionally they cross a line where they actually start sending hate to idols. I'm not going to give specific examples because I don't want to target anyone, especially because their opinions may have changed. Anyways, most of the time this hate isn't even justified. They just say that they dislike an idol because they talk less, or their dancing is bad, etc. Now, I think that it's fine to explain why you don't like an idol, but it crosses the line when you go beyond stating facts, such as how their voice sounds or whether they're introverted, to using falsehoods like dating rumors or weight gain speculation. That is absolutely not okay and anyone making videos like that should rethink why they include such hateful opinions or even have them at all. 2. People not doing their research and then saying incorrect things in their videos. This one makes me incredibly angry. I get that sometimes you don't want to put so much effort into your videos. I've been there. But fact checking is still something you can never skip. By not doing your research, you could be contributing to spreading rumor thing. For example, I saw the video where someone said that the song favorite was by the group Loka, where in reality the group favorite released a song called Loka. This one isn't that big of a deal, honestly, but considering that the person who made that video wanted to boost favorite's popularity, that mistake wouldn't help much. It doesn't help, either, that so many people get their news from Stan Twitter which is a cesspit of misinformation. We have always dealt with Kness. Well now we have a new problem which is tweet nets. Like when everyone was talking about Kachi's upcoming song names and offensive fandom name, neither of which existed and had been made up by people on Twitter. At the very least use multiple sources to confirm. 3. In slash grammar. I sure hope the missing L ticked you off there, because that is how I feel a lot of the time. So with this one there are two sides. I think that it's fine to have bad spelling or grammar if you're from another country, as English is not the first language for the majority of the world and probably the majority of K-pop you. Tube as well so which, at the very least don't spell every third word incorrectly, especially when you use the robot voice, because then the robot voice will mess it up even worse. I'm not that mad about this one but it's somewhat annoying. The reason why this is, may actually be explained by my fourth complaint. 4. The fact that so many K-tubers are literally 10. I can see why many K-pop YouTubers are teenagers. I mean, we watch YouTube all day so why not make videos of our own? But I have seen literal 10 year olds making YouTube videos. Kids, do you not have a feel to frolic around in? Are you okay? I'm going to sound like a boomer right now, but you need to cherish your 10 year old moments. It doesn't get any better when you get older. So please get off of YouTube while you are still not depressed enough to be on the internet 24-7. I care about your well-being, I really do, and I am giving you very solid advice right here. And even if I didn't want you to be happy, kids have the tendency to spread misinformation much faster. So I'd rather you all not be on YouTube since it really exacerbates the spreading rumors problem. 5 Disclaimers I think that a lot of K-pop YouTubers, myself included, have a bit of a persecution complex. People put a whole minute of disclaimers before their unpopular opinions videos when in reality, nothing they said would make anyone that mad. So why put the disclaimer? You all literally want to be hated on. I swear. I guess even negative attention is still attention, right? Actual bullies will find a way to hate on you no matter what you put in your videos, even if your opinions are super tame. So don't waste your time worrying about it. If people don't like your videos and opinions, oh well, that's their loss. Be confident with your opinions. Also, disclaimers are something that really make viewers want to click off. 
especially if they go on for a long time. So if anything get rid of them because they are decreasing your audience retention. 6. Saying legitimate criticism is hate. C. You put such long disclaimers hoping that you'll get hate, but you don't get any because your opinions are tame. So when actual criticism arrives you jump on it thinking that it's hate. I understand that all you 10 year olds, who are probably watching this video hoping I'll hate on you, lack emotional maturity, but still, criticism is not hate, especially when it's constructive. People go and constructively criticize K-pop groups, but when someone else does it to them suddenly it's offensive. If you get a comment that is a genuine rebuttal to your opinions, they aren't targeting you, they're targeting your opinions, so you should defend your opinions accordingly. I love it when people explain why they disagree with me. Usually it's very informed and sometimes even changes my views. We need to normalize changing opinions. 7. Using people or everyone when referring to something when in reality only referring to a subgroup. X. People have been saying that. Everyone thinks that. This is a big problem in the K-pop community because we can all roughly be sorted into groups based on the groups that we stan. So usually when talking about a specific group, idol, or scandal, we say everyone or people when talking about what opinions exist on that subject. I too am guilty of this. But what that habit misses is that the majority of people do not care. In fact most K-pop stands aren't even aware of whatever you're talking about. When you generalize, it blows things way out of proportion and can lead to misinformation. I know that this is a really hard habit to drop, and I'm trying to drop it too. Let's work on it together. 8. YouTube needs some version of slash s because you can't tell tone from the widely used robot voice. I'm an avid redditor, I don't care how lame you think this is, and if you didn't know, a commonly used thing on reddit is the slash s the way that you use it is that whenever you say something sarcastically or jokingly, you should put the slash s afterwards so that people don't take it seriously. This is important because with typing, you obviously can't tell someone's tone. Kpop youtube often uses the robot voice, which is the same problem of having zero intonation. That's why I put these subtitles. So you can see the exclamation points. So, I think that people should clarify when they're sarcastic or joking with some sort of version of the slash s what that could be. I don't know, but it's just a suggestion. 9. Clickbait thumbnails. Now we all know that you need an eye-catching thumbnail to get literally any views. And it's fine too. For example, put the most famous group you talk about in your video in the thumbnail. Or put your most controversial opinion in the thumbnail. But you cannot just put an idol who you never once talked about in your video into the thumbnail, or just make up some offensive opinion to put in the thumbnail to get clicks. That is literally so ridiculous. And if your audience retention is super low because of clickbait thumbnails, you only have yourself to blame. This isn't that big of a deal, but still a pet peeve of mine. Oh, and something I notice about K-pop thumbnails is that a lot of people, myself included, Put text in the bottom right corner. Don't do that. It will be covered up by the length of the video when it's suggested. So if you have something really juicy to put in your thumbnail don't put it there. 10. Arguments in comments. This one is super annoying. Quit having long arguments in the comments when both sides know that neither of them will give in. It's a waste of time and energy for the poor YouTuber who you know is going to read the whole thing. What does it matter if some random child whose username is Super Army once blink disagrees with you? Don't waste your time on them. There isn't much else to say about this one, except don't be a dumbass. But oh wait, Super Army once blink is 10 years old so she doesn't have that logical thinking capability. Please, if you are in one of these arguments, just don't. Go stream your faves instead. 11. Crop to fill abuse. Alright. This one makes me angrier than a lot of these combined. Cropping out the logo of the Fancom or Stage Mix Maker is literally content theft. I know that people with common sense will realize that no, you were not in Seoul with a DSLR camera or the Blackpink fan sign. But regardless, why would you crop out the logo? That Fancom or Stage Mix Maker deserves the recognition for what they made. They put those logos because it's their creation. How would you feel if someone went and reposted your videos with zero transformation? You should feel guilty enough about using those as background footage anyways. 
goodness knows I do, so going that extra step to erase the creator's stamp is so vile. If I ever make money from this channel, I'm going right out and using it to buy Final Cut Pro so I can make my own stage mixes and feel a little less bad about it. And if you all steal my stage mixes, we will have a very large problem on our hands. 12. Recent C bias when reviewing comebacks. There isn't much to say about this one, it's just something I dislike. It's very hard to not feel biased towards recent releases. It's not that big of a deal, just something I noticed. Next complaint. 13. People not actually saying what they think and or making their opinions less offensive in order to appeal to more people. Again, people are going to hate on you no matter what you put out, so why hold back? It's so ridiculous too. For example, make a review video of a group that you aren't that interested in because it will get you more views. You won't feel passionate about the content, you'll put less effort into it, and believe it or not, it really shows. Even though none of us show our faces and most of us don't use our voices either, that doesn't mean that K-pop YouTube has to be a game of lies. Lying is such a hard thing to maintain, and if you're 100% truthful then you'll never have to worry about something coming back to bite you later. 14. Don't dislike a video because you dislike the opinion. After all, they said it would be unpopular, why are you surprised? Instead dislike it because you don't like the quality etc. This is a perpetual problem on Reddit, actually, where people downvote posts not because of the actual quality of the post but because they disagree with whatever was said in it. Same goes with YouTube. A YouTuber will say one bad thing about a group and their video is showered with dislikes from those stands. Their video could be the best produced video ever, the rest of the video could be a literal movie, and it would still get those dislikes. If you're going to like or dislike a video, look at the whole video, only that video, and look at it objectively. Don't dislike a video because a year ago, the YouTuber made a video where they said an idol's hair was ugly. Instead dislike a video because the YouTuber is spreading rumors. Dislike it because of a clickbait thumbnail. Really, dislike it for any of the things that I've been complaining about for this entire video. And if you like the video, then hit like. It's that simple. With that being said, that's everything I hate about K-pop YouTube. For now. It's been a few months and this is what I've collected over that time. But I have no doubt that as I get more into it, I'll come across so many more things to hate. Already this is such a long script, so I can only imagine how much worse it's going to get. Do remember that I do enjoy K-pop YouTube. Otherwise I wouldn't make videos. I'm just an incredibly pessimistic and cynical person so I find it quite easy to pick out the bad things and complain about them extensively. What's not to love? Maybe I should make a video about all the things that I like about K-pop YouTube. But with how volatile this platform is, goodness knows it'll get half the views that this one does, just another thing to hate. Am I right? I want to say thanks for 100 subscribers, but I'll do that in a pinned comment because I know for a fact that only 5 people ever make it this far into the video anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video, or maybe it made you mad. Either way, you still watched it, so that's a win for me. Bye guys, and I'll see you in the next one.